Okay, so this is the fourth video. Um, we now want to highlight these two and drag this down. And you notice that we get some strange values here, not what we would expect. And so if we go back and look at this, what happened was, uh, if I click up here, you can see this is using E3, but when I drag that down, if I look at the, uh, the next one down there, it's using E4, but there's nothing there. So we have to go back to this one and put a dollar sign in front of the 3, and then that will lock that cell at 3 so that it, when I drag down, it doesn't move down. And that, then we'll do the same thing for the Y, the equation in Y. And so now, hopefully, if we drag this down, we get the uh, the right values here. All right, so I'm uh, just going to highlight this. And for some reason, it's not cooperating there. And I'll just go ahead and put uh, borders in here, and then maybe just shift everything so it's uh, everything is centered. So we have this nice table now, and we want to transfer these values uh, over here. So we have x1 through x11. And so now what we're going to do is type in equals transpose. As soon as I start to get that, I can just double click on transpose. And then we have to fill in these values, which are the ones that we want put in those cells. And then uh, just uh, put, in, put in the right parenthesis. Then we do a control shift enter. Control shift enter. And then we do the same thing with the uh, y values. So we go from y1 to y11 equals transpose and have to, you have to make sure you select the same number of values there and uh, right parenthesis then control shift enter okay so these values are now controlled by this table if I change the uh, anything that affects these equations such as the pitch diameter then the table will update and also update uh, these values as well so at this point uh, the table is all set up and I'll just hit save and close the table and now if we go back and uh, edit the sketch you can see that the magenta these lines have all changed from black, still fully defined, but they've all changed from black to magenta, and that's because all the magenta colored uh, items are controlled by the design table. Okay, So now we can uh, zoom in here and go ahead and put in the spline. And so I'll just pick on the spline button here. <coughs> you want to make sure that you do this carefully. Grab the end of that radial line and then continue across and of course we want to make sure that uh, we have enough points so that we get past the addendum circle when you have to do the last one just click on the spline command again and again now you can see this is fully defined uh, so just to make sure I don't lose what I have done so far. As you know, you should always save regularly. So I'm going to uh, get out of the sketch and just hit the save button. Okay, so now what we have to do is create a mirror line um, so that we can create the other side of the tooth. And to do that, we're going to make use of the fact that at the pitch circle right here, the width of the tooth is the same as the width of the space. Uh, because this uh, gear has a diametral pitch of 6 and a pitch diameter of 5.5, so 6 times 5.5 is 33, there's going to be 33 teeth and 33 spaces. So we can create a segment that is 360 degrees divided by 66. And I'm going to have to stop here and move on with the next video.